Hello again everyone. So in this video, we'll be doing another vector subspace proof. And the proof is to show that the following subset of PR, um, so PR remember is the set of all polynomials. There's no restriction on its degree like PNR, it's just all polynomials. Okay. So is the following subset of PR a vector space? And the subset is W, which is equal to, you know, a set of polynomials such that so our condition is that the set of polynomials that belongs to w um, when integrated from minus one to one is equal to zero okay so i'll give you an example of um, what we could see uh, of an element in, in w so um, take take x for instance so if you integrate minus one to one of x dx well, this is just a simple power rule. So you do x squared over 2 from minus 1 to 1. Then you have a half that's out. And you have 1 square minus minus 1 square. And we all know that minus 1 square is just 1, right? So this is just 1. So in fact, you have 1 minus 1, which is half minus a half times 0, which is 0, okay? And so x would belong to w, okay? So that's an example. Uh, that doesn't prove anything. I just wanted to show you an example of a vector that could belong to W. Okay, so remember what we need to do for our vector subspace proofs. First, we need to show that the zero vector belongs to W. Then we need to show closure and addition, that is, U plus V belongs to W. And then we need to show that C, U also belongs to W. Okay? Okay, so let's do the first one. So does the zero vector belong to W? Um, so in this case, what is the zero vector? The zero vector really is the, so the zero vector is actually the zero polynomial, or really the zero polynomial is just the zero um, belonging to the real numbers. Okay, so it's just zero, like if you have a zero uh, trees or zero rivers or whatever. So it's a, a quantity, it's a number, okay? So um, to, to see if, if this guy belongs to W, will we... Uh, the only thing we need to do is we hit it with the condition, which in this case is the integral, and we see if if it's equal to zero. So, um, does the integral of minus one to one of zero dx equals zero? Okay. So let's take the left hand side, and obviously this this requires a bit, just a bit of calculus, not a lot. So the only thing you really need to remember here is an integral really is just the area under the curve. And so if you have if you have zero, right? So if this is x and this is y, and so you have this is basically y equals zero. So y equals zero is here. Okay? And it goes from minus one to one. Well the area under zero is of course zero. So the integral from minus one to one of zero dx is equal to zero and so this is in fact equal to zero so the zero vector does belong to w okay so this just requires a bit just a tiny bit of calculus you'll 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 most likely see some examples of you know easy calculus in linear algebra because all mathematics are, are related um so so yeah d don't be surprised if you see this in examples or practice problems or or, or that that kind of stuff okay so that was the zero vector. Now let's do closure under addition. So suppose, suppose F and G belong to W. Then that means, so as soon as you write that F and G belong to W, write what that means in terms of the condition. Then that means that minus one, the integral from minus one to one of F of dx is equal to zero, okay? And the integral from minus one to one of G dx equals zero, okay? So now what I want to see, what I want to check is does, does f plus g belong to w, okay? So basically, essentially what I'm trying to check, so what this, the, what's the, what this translates it as is, is the integral from minus one to one of f plus g dx equal, so is this equal to zero? Okay, why the sum? Because we're taking f of g. So f of g is our new 
So this is like our, our vector. So this is in fact the vector. So it's the vector addition. Addition. Okay. So this is our result, and that's why we're taking that guy as um so that's why we're taking this guy in our integral because we're trying to see if, if the result of the vector addition also belongs to w okay well let's see so let's now of course you you need to start with your left hand side because if you start with your right hand side then you have zero and you can't really go anywhere from zero um, zero is, is essentially nothing okay so the left hand side is equal to minus one to one integral from minus one to one f plus g the x okay so now what you need to remember what you need to remember from your calculus class is that for any integral definite or not if you take the integral of f plus g dx then the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the integrals i.e. the integral of f plus g dx is equal to the integral of f dx plus the integral of g dx this is also from calculus so you, you need to have a bit of knowledge of, of calculus in order to do these these vector subspace proofs. Sometimes, not always, but most of the time. Okay? So that's what I'm gonna rewrite. I'm gonna rewrite it as minus one to one of f dx, f dx plus integral from minus one to one of g dx. Okay? And now what do I know about these two guys? Well, I know from the initial condition here initial condition here that they're both equal to zero so I have zero plus zero this is from the condition from the condition okay and then zero plus zero is obviously zero and so we've we've essentially checked we've checked this equality so this is true and hence we can say that hence f plus g belongs to w so it's closed under addition under addition okay so okay that's closure under under addition i hope that's clear really what we do is we, ju we just take two arbitrary elements in in uh, w we say what that means i.e that the integral from minus one to one is zero and then we just do a bit of, of calculus manipulation it's not really i mean it's just basic calculus rules um, and, and then we get that it belongs to W. Um, okay, so I hope that's clear. Then the next one, well, the last one is closure under scalar multiplication. So um, again, suppose so suppose f belongs to W, and we have a scalar c that belongs to f. In this case, our field F is actually the real numbers because remember we're dealing with so Y R because we're dealing with P R. So it, it wouldn't make sense to say you know just the field because a field could be it could be any any kind of number field. It could be the complex numbers, it could be the irrational numbers, the real numbers. Uh, it could be anything. Well, irrational doesn't have a field, but so uh, it's better to actually specify what field you're you're dealing with. In this case, R. Okay, uh, right, so now I have f, I have an arbitrary element in w, and a scalar. So what I'm trying to check, I'm trying to check that cf belongs to w. And essentially what this translates, what this translates to is, is the integral from minus 1 to 1 of c of f dx equal to 0. So I want to check that. Of course, again, we're going to have to start with our left-hand side. If we don't, then we really, we really get nothing from zero. You, you don't usually start your proof, your equality proof with the zero side. So the left-hand side is equal to the integral from minus 1 to 1 of cf of dx. Okay. And again, unfortunately, we're going to have to use some calculus properties. So we know from calculus that if you take the derivative definite or not definite of a constant times a function of x, and if this constant has nothing to do with x, then we can just simply take the constant out and then do the integral. So it's, it's equal to c 
integral of f of x dx. Okay? So that's what we're going to use in our equality. So this is now equal to c integral from minus 1 to 1 of f dx. And we know that because, so because f belongs to w, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of f dx is 0. Okay? So that means that here, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of dx is 0. So essentially we have c times 0. This is our multiplication over the real numbers. Anything times 0 is, you know it, 0. Okay? And so essentially we've shown the equality we were trying to prove. That is that the integral from minus 1 to 1 of cf dx is in fact equal to 0. Hence, hence we have that. Hence, cf belongs to pr, uh, not pr, sorry, well, it does belong to pr, but it also belongs to w. And so, it's closed under scalar multiplication. I apologize for my handwriting, as always. And so, because of, so, because, because of, 1, 2, and 3, W is a subspace. Subspace, i.e. because we proved closure under scalar multiplication, then closure under addition, and then that the zero vector belongs to your subspace, we've essentially shown that W is, in fact, a subspace. Okay, so that was another, was another video about proofs on, uh, on polynomials. I'll do a couple more, maybe a couple on matrices and... Um, and then we'll move on. All right.